In June 2015, select American delegates from the Center for Citizens Initiatives met in Moscow with Andrei Kortunov, the Director General of Russia's International Affairs Council. Council activities are aimed at strengthening peace and solidarity between peoples, preventing international conflicts, and crisis management. I had a few questions for him. What kind of misconceptions would you like to correct uh, that have been propagated in the American media? Well, you know, for example, you know, in my view, it would be wrong to assume that uh, from the very outset, you know, Putin had this master plan. Uh, to, to somehow restore the Soviet Union and uh, uh, to undercut the United States and, uh, uh, you know, to get to an authoritarian political regime. I don't think that it is right. Uh, I think that Putin was sincere when he called President Bush after 9-11 and uh, when he offered, you know, his assistance and cooperation. I think that the Putin's agenda was quite integrationist, uh, and then it was overtaken by events. Uh, I also disagree with the idea that, uh, you know, we all lived in a nice uh, world where everybody uh, followed rules of the game, you know, United Nations resolutions and international law until Ukraine, and then suddenly, you know, something went wrong, and uh, the Ukraine uh, crisis ruined the international system. I think it's not the case, you know. We should dig a little bit deeper, and we should not forget about what happened in places like Yugoslavia or in Iraq. And again, you know, I don't want to label uh, the U.S. foreign policy, but, you know, let's face it, you know, we all participated in this gradual erosion uh, of the international legal system. Some contributed more, some less, but it's not the point. The point is that uh, you cannot limit the problem to Ukraine. And you cannot limit the problem to just one man. The problem is much more fundamental, and uh, it needs a, a more comprehensive approach. It does mean that I'm not critical. Uh, I am. I think that. We on this side also made many mistakes, uh, uh, but um, we have to, uh, you know, what I dislike about the That's US. That's what I'd like to hear. Yes. What I dislike about the U.S. discussion on these issues, the discussion is focused on how to punish Russia and how to make life. For Mr. Putin harder. I understand the emotions, <laughs> but it's not the problem. The problem is how to solve, you know, these issues that we have to confront right now. How to make our world uh, safer, how to make international relations more stable, how to reconcile different visions, different interests. And this is the issue, you know, we should think not about how to punish. Maybe, you know, someone has to be punished, but it's not uh, the ultimate uh, uh, problem that we have to deal with. Well, how can you possibly deal with a country uh, who seems to be misrepresenting you? Well, I think that it is, it is definitely an issue. But again, this misrepresentation uh, is uh, a product of the current unfortunate trend of political relations. I recall, you know, let me tell you, um, I was involved, uh, uh, marginally, but nevertheless, I was involved uh, in the preparation of uh, President, uh, President Obama's trip to Moscow. And that was uh, exactly, it was uh, 2009. So, that was six years ago. And uh, I was in charge of the civil society uh, uh, part of his uh, visit. We put together a large group of civil society institutions, I think, uh, dozens and dozens. We had a, a room of 300 people, and Obama came to our meeting, and he made a speech, and uh, he interacted with civil society organizations. And I can tell you that uh, he was very, very popular in Moscow. 
know, people really liked the guy. He was so different. You know, he was young and articulate and uh, also you know, an African American. Can you imagine? It was such a uh, different type of uh, an American leader. So there was a lot of enthusiasm and sympathy, which suggests that you know people are not genetically anti-American. Likewise, you know, I, you know, I spent some time in your country and I travel there from time to time. I don't think that Americans are genetically anti-Russian. Maybe right now they, some would say, you know, Russians, you have always been naughty. You have always been different. But I don't think that it is really something that will define Americans. Uh, so, uh, in my view, uh, you mentioned misrepresentation. I think it is an issue. But I don't think uh, uh, that uh, uh, people in the streets, I don't know what impression you got here during the street, but I don't think that uh, they have, you know, this uh, xenophobic hostile feelings in their blood. I think that people do have common sense. And if you get to this country, whatever they say about the U.S. government policies, they still go to see, you know, Hollywood blockbusters. They like to wear American jeans. They would like to listen to American music. There is a lot of, you know, they have iPhones and iPads. There is a lot of American cultural influence in this country. Uh, so I would not overestimate the current uh, rise of anti-Americanism anti in Russia. It exists. It is something that we have to deal with, uh, but I don't think that it is uh, really a kind of existential problem that uh, cannot be resolved. Mm -hmm. So, To what would you attribute it? Well, I, I think that, of course, uh, uh, you can attribute it partially to the uh, official propaganda, which is powerful, uh, but you can attribute it to some American actions uh, which uh, were a disappointment. For uh, example? Well, you know, for example, uh, if you uh, take a couple of American engagements in various parts of the world, uh, which led to humanitarian disasters and to terrorism and to collapse of states. Uh, also, I think uh, the perception here uh, is that uh, the United States does not treat Russia fairly. For example, when they talk about Minsk agreements, whatever happens, whatever problem emerges here, Putin is to blame. I haven't heard any official criticism of Ukrainian authorities coming from Washington, D.C. They also have problems, you know, these are not angels sitting in Kyiv. But no one seems to notice that, which suggests that Americans are not necessarily objective in uh, the judgments that they make. Perhaps because they've been misinformed. Well, probably because they were misinformed. I agree, I agree, that might be uh, uh, the conclusion. But again, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, this is not something that cannot be resolved. It depends on our patient's commitment, it depends on, uh, you know, our... Uh, readiness to invest time and effort. And that's why we're here in Russia, to find out the truth from mm -hmm. you. Well, you know, I'm not the ultimate source of truth. I have my own opinion. And that's what we're seeking, yes. And my opinion is also biased in certain ways, of course, because uh, you know, I happen to live here. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, I think that pluralism is important. Uh, I think uh, some kind of humility on both sides uh, is important. Uh, we should be ready to to accept that we make mistakes, uh, but uh, that shouldn't prevent us from going on and trying to find the right answers to the questions that we have. Mm -hmm. So let's let's keep trying. Yeah. You know, so many people discourage me from coming to Russia because of misperceptions they had about it, and I I'm amazed at how healthy people here look, how well dressed they are, how, how <laughs> yeah. kind they are. I'm really impressed with, with Russia so far. Well, thank you all again. You know, I don't want to generalize. You know, this country has its own uh, problems and uh, I think that uh, 
these are not small problems that this country faces. But you've made remarkable progress in the past uh, two decades. Well, the country, and that's another, you know, misperception uh, that uh, probably the United States uh, should pay more attention to, that Russia is uh, no longer the Soviet Union. Right. Uh, that uh, whatever you say, because, you know, when you uh, watch uh, U.S. movies uh, and if you, you know, follow Russian characters here, uh, they came from 1960s or 1970s, right. but we are different, you know, we are getting westernized, we are getting, you know, cosmopolitan, you know, people here, they travel much more than they used to, uh, you know, the younger generation is fluent in English, uh, many of them uh, uh, got their education abroad, or at least uh, got the education of uh, western standards, so the country is changing, maybe it is not changing as fast as we would like it to change. Uh, maybe it's the change is uneven, uh, uh, but uh, it, it is changing and uh, we should have patience and we should have some kind of understanding of this very radical, very profound uh, transformation that the country and the people are going through. At least that would be my suggestion. I understand that Americans are impatient and the Russians are also impatient, and the societies are impatient, uh, generally. But, uh, you know, nations do not change overnight. We have to find ways to get to changing. The <laughs> process started. Without losing themselves. Don't forget <laughs> about that, you know. And uh, without misrepresenting. And uh, without misrepresenting, you know, I think that, uh, but again, it's... Uh, it's so hard to talk about uh, misrepresentation because, uh, as one American mentioned, Russia is such a country that uh, no matter what you say about it, it would be true. <laughs> if you look for something, you will find this something. Uh, you will find crimes here. You will find uh, cruelty here. Uh, you would find uh, anti-Americanism. And it will be true, it will be a part of the picture, but it is not likely to be the whole picture. And I think that uh, if you have integrity, you should try to present uh, uh, the picture of integrity to the extent possible, because again, as I said, we are all opinionated and we are all biased in our own ways. So, you know, if you are looking for something you're likely to find it. If you're anti-American, it doesn't matter you know, where you go in the United States, you will find something that would allow you to keep thinking bad about the United States. So, let's try to be positive. It's a wonderful place to get on. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I was wondering if you could speak on what are your organization's plans for the future? Well, you know, we are working now, we are kind of uh, uh, apply the Res Policy Research Center. So we're trying to give recommendations uh, uh, on how to make the Russian foreign policy more efficient and how to promote uh, uh, this uh, Russian uh, policies towards globalization and how to make sure that our relations with other nations are healthier and uh, more profitable for both sides. That includes, of course, the United States, but uh, we have projects with Chinese or Indians, Europeans. We handle issues of migrations and, uh, I don't know, cooperation in the Arctic region. So it's a pretty broad agenda. We're trying to be helpful uh, to the Russian leadership, but also to international institutions, to our partners abroad, to the extent possible. I think you're a very tactful man that's come through very loud and clear, and I think uh, well-meaning people will uh, see where your heart is, and they will appreciate that very much. So I'd like to thank you so much for this uh, talk. Thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for keeping this country on your radar screen. <laughs> we really appreciate that. It definitely is. It's a wonderful country, and I will come back. Thank you. Thank you so much.